So this is the first video in my series on how to build a story from the ground up. I'm going to start out with a little context about me as a writer and why you should consider giving a damn about what I have to say about writing. But if you just want to skip straight to the technique stuff, then I'll put a shortcut link down below. So I've been taking writing seriously, as in for publication, for about seven years now. I've worked my way through a couple of full-size courses on writing. I have read lots and lots of writing advice by lots of different people and I've been experimenting with my own techniques and tools and methods for all of that time as well. But it's only in the last year that I've really revolutionised the way I work and really gotten a handle on those concepts and workflows that have helped me eliminate all that wasted time and frustration that I've dealt with in the past. As always, writing advice is extremely personal. Everyone's brain works in a different way to handle and work with basically the same core concepts and tenets of storytelling. I'm probably not expressing much new in the way of content, but this is the way my brain works. And if I can express something in a particular way that helps you understand it a little bit better, then I'll have considered it a success. Basically, these are the things that I wish I'd known or understood better when I was getting started. So this series is really going to be about building a story from the ground up, starting with those initial little seeds of ideas and expanding them into something really big and complex and interesting that you can really work with. A lot of outlining advice is really about ordering ideas that you maybe already have. Where do you get those ideas? How do you generate the stuff which you can then transcribe into an outline? Where do you start? So over the course of this video series, I'm going to show you my process, which involves something like the following. You use brainstorming techniques to create your core story elements, which are motive, conflict and effect, and then you organise those and compile them into an outline. So these elements are the things you absolutely need before you start your story. There will be problems you need to solve over and above that, but you can work those out as you go, brainstorming as necessary. All you have to do is find the right question. So let's get into it. What is brainstorming? Enter some bad clip art of brains and clouds here. If you sit down with a piece of paper and write ideas for my story on it and try and brainstorm, you're not going to get very far. You're going to get lost in a sea of rabid, thinly sketched authors. You either end up with crap or you end up with crap and some good stuff that you have no idea how to organise into an outline, or your muse just clams up and you get nothing at all because the question you've asked is too big. On the other side of the writing advice spectrum, you have checklists. Here's a list of things you need to know before you start your story and you're like, yeah, but how do I get those things? How do I make my brain give me those things and give me ones that I like? Those epiphanies about your story that just hit you aren't going to be enough. And there's no way of telling what you're going to get from that. They're not necessarily going to give you the right ideas. You might just end up with ideas that make your story a bit prettier or add some depth, but you don't have anything to add depth to yet because you don't have the skeleton down. So you need to take control of your ideas. And here's how you do it. Directed brainstorming. Active problem solving directed to creating the specific story elements that you need to start your story. Not the details, not the icing, the fucking cake base. You know, you need your eggs and flour in there before you can start putting icing sugar on it. Just saying. And I've got a wee bit of bad news for you guys. Directed brainstorming is actually work. Spontaneous lightning strike epiphanies are lots of fun, but 90% of the ideas that make up your story are going to be mined through hard work from the earth, not plucked out of thin air. But here's the good news. Doing this work makes it vastly more likely that you're going to have those amazing lightning strike epiphanies. This is science. You get out what you put in. Your brain is working all the time, even when you're not consciously thinking about things. But what you spend your conscious time on determines what your brain is going to work on in the background. You don't spend that time actively working on a problem. Your brain isn't going to prioritise it and you're never going to get that eureka. I'm referencing a non-fiction book called The Organised Mind, by the way, which is fantastic. Studies have shown that people who have spent a significant amount of time playing a new game often had dreams about it that night and often woke up and were actually better at it or they'd had a revelation or they'd some, in some way improved, showing that their brain had been working on it while they were asleep. But your brain can't do that unless you put in the work first. So here's what you do. You use a specific brainstorming method to create a specific story element encapsulated by a question. So brainstorming methods. An example question might be, what is this character's worst fear? That's going to be a brainstorming question for motive. And don't worry, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on that on my video on motive. So you find a technique and you start trying out different answers to that question. 
You could mind map or cluster, you could make a bullet list of different possibilities. You could talk it out either to yourself or with someone you know. You could do some free writing or free typing, um, or you could use the five ideas technique, which is one of my favourites in which you just number one to five and you come up with five different possibilities. But don't stop there. Look up your own brainstorming techniques, experiment with whatever works for you. And not only that, but if you find you're not getting very far, change the question, change the phrasing. Maybe you just haven't worded the question quite right for your brain to properly latch onto it and understand it. But the real secret is that there's no golden brainstorming method. In fact, the fact that you can use some of these tools for things that aren't brainstorming kind of proves that. You can use mind mapping and bullets as note-taking devices. Everything you have on the page might just be something you've copied, wrote, without any problem solving involved. What's really important for brainstorming is your mindset. Whatever the technique you're using, you need to be in the mindset of generating content or information that doesn't have to be perfect. Let yourself generate crap. This isn't the answer. This is the workbook. Let it suck. Let it suck. Sing let it go if it helps you is the point. Please don't ever let me sing it. What brainstorming really is, when you boil it down underneath all that, is coming up with a solution to a problem by creating multiple possibilities. Any method which allows you to come up with possibilities, which might even contradict each other, works. But you have to be getting them out into the world. Letting it all just roil around in your head is no good. More brain science here from The Organised Mind. Studies show that when your brain doesn't want to forget something, it rehearses it over and over which was a great thing for it to do back before we had writing utensils. But if you externalise it, if you write it down or express it in some way in the external world, your brain has a chance to forget it, to relax and to entertain new and often better ideas. It literally frees up brain space and processing for you to work on other things. Another reason you need to be getting stuff out of your head is because of the anatomy of a pen. There's this great Tumblr post which illustrates this perfectly and I will try and cite it down below and things. It talks about artists, but it's the exact same for writers. The first wee bit of ink in a pen is the bad stuff that you have to write it out until you get to the good stuff. That's why your fifth idea is almost always better than your first. You need to let yourself warm up. You need to push through that cold start of feeling clunky and stupid and like nothing that you're doing is any good because good stuff will come if you keep going. <laughs> That's the important part, you have to keep going. So lastly, um, when you hit a really good idea, you need to mark it in some way. As soon as you're like, fuck man, I need to use that idea. Mark it, highlight it, draw a little star next to it, just something that's gonna differentiate it from the brain splurge um, so that you can come back to it later and know that you want to use that and you don't have to comb through pages and pages You'll need it later when you're actually organising your ideas into an outline. But if you're still not sure what ideas you want to use or if any of them are any good, don't worry. You can always make a note to yourself to re-examine this page or whatever other format you're using later. So that's about it for this video. I hope I said one or two things that you maybe found bordering on useful. And brainstorming is going to make a lot more sense in the context of my future videos as well because all these things are interconnected so it makes it kind of hard to speak about them in a linear way but I'm doing my best. If this video didn't make you want to throw up violently then please consider giving me a thumbs up because it would really help me out. And yeah that's about it really. You may have noticed that I'm kind of changing my schedule on this channel. I haven't been posting videos every Sunday Basically it's because I work my writing and my videos around my coffee work but it varies a lot week to week and it has in the last couple of months. And because YouTube was a hard commitment and writing was a soft commitment, um, writing was getting short shrift basically. Writing has to come first for me unfortunately as much as I love making videos and I have lots of ideas for ones coming up as well. This means from now on whenever I have two days of writing a week and I can do a video on top of that, I will do a video. But if I've got two days or less, then I'm gonna spend that time on writing. I'm Rachel Stephen, I'm an author and YouTuber. My sci-fi novel, State of Flux, is available on Amazon and elsewhere at the moment. If you'd like to read some chapters for free or find out a bit about North of the End, which is the book I'm writing at the moment, then you can check it out at rachelstephen.com. And if you're new, I'd consider subscribing to my channel. All new subscribers will receive a free, complete blood transfusion of copper. That's right, we'll replace all your blood with copper Copper is really in right now. Just check Pinterest. Um, and yeah, man, babe, consider like so much street cred, like me. Story are gonna be mind hard, mind hard. Oh yeah. <laughs>
spontaneous. I was gonna make an X-Men joke, but I'm just gonna leave it there. TM, Stephen, 2K16. I'm definitely not the first person to call it that, to say that words. Say that words. Uh, sorry. Also, lol, mopeds. Ooh.